man, do I need to shave. That's great. Anyway, it's like looking in a mirror. I can tell you what's going to happen. But today, what we're going to talk about is safety. Can you overdo it? Now, what you probably think when you're looking at that title is I'm probably going to go on the usual gunner tirade of you can never overdo safety. You need to follow all the rules of firearm safety. If you don't, you have nobody to blame but yourself, blah, 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 blah. I'm not. Now, that's an interesting thing about me. I always tend to take a different view on things here because... That's just the way I feel about them, and it's not, I don't always just go with the masses, this is how I actually feel about it. So can you take safety too far? I am a firm believer that in fact you can take safety too far. Now, this is something that has been inspired by some comments I've seen on both internet forums and YouTube videos, not even just recently, over uh, quite, a, quite a long time, maybe even years. But it was recently sparked by something I saw on a forum. And what that was, was the guy was going to balance his pistol up to take a picture on a flat surface. And what people typically do, or sometimes do, is they'll take a pen or another long straight object and they'll stick it through the trigger guard to balance the pistol up on its side to get a better angle. I ha I've done it over here with my pistol stand-in because the People's Republic of New York doesn't trust me with real ones. But what I have here is what I'm talking about. You see how it looks like it's levitating there on Mr. Steve Jobs? Yes, that's the Steve Jobs biography, and that's a P99 BB gun. And I have a Fisher space pen in there, but you see how much cooler that looks than if it was just laying flat against there? It almost looks like it's floating now. But that's why people do it. But this pen in the trigger guard here, whoops, it fell off. Uh, this pen in the trigger guard here was a point of concern on the forums because people said, oh, you're violating the rule of firearm safety there. You're not supposed to have your finger on the trigger or anything in the trigger guard until you're ready to shoot. And to which I have a problem with that. I, I think that treat every gun like it's loaded always is one of the f fundamental rules of firearm safety that cannot always be followed. In fact, I know it cannot always be followed, uh, and I'll get into that in a second. But basically the point of this video is people take safety a little too far with guns. Now, I understand that they're very dangerous. They can be very dangerous objects, but... You have to also understand that if you take safety too far with, with something, you will never have any fun with it. Just like if you're going to go out and buy a $250,000 Lamborghini and only drive with 30 miles an hour. Sometimes you're probably going to go a little fast with it. If you can do it safely, by all means, do it. I don't think that we need to be taking safety too far all the time. Probably not a particularly popular opinion. There's probably people out there that will stick to their guns that, you know, guns should never be anything but 100% safe. Well, I think that guns should never be anything but 100% safe, but I don't think that some of the steps that people take are always needed. Okay, and let's, let's start about uh, talking with the, uh, the objects in the trigger guard there. I have some uh, points here that I am going to be discussing. Let's start with the objects in the trigger guard there. Okay, so you have the pistol here. Or at the stand and, well, pretend it's a real pistol. Don't tell anybody in New York. I'll probably have the Gestapo bust down my door. But you place a, a long object in the trigger guard there, and that balances it so it looks like it's at a cool angle when you take a picture of it. Is that dangerous in the least? No. But that was the point of contention on the forum that it, in fact, was, when, in fact, it is not. Okay? Now, okay, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Don't put anything in the trigger. Uh, I got until you're ready to shoot, that's great. Unless, I think that there's a big unless here, unless you, nobody else, don't let anybody tell you that they did, but unless you personally just checked the gun. Because one thing that you can look at is if you're taking down, say, a Glock or some other striker-fired pistol, lots of striker-fired pistols, you need to pull the trigger for the gun to be disassembled. You have to pull the trigger. You can't take it down any other way. Okay, so what do you do there? I thought you're supposed to treat every gun like it's loaded. You're not going to be pulling the trigger on a gun if it's loaded inside your house. If you just check the gun, you, you yourself, nobody else, this is, this is where it's important, you, because people can be a little flaky sometimes, but if you just drop the mag yourself... Hold the slide back, checked in the chamber, and felt in the chamber, and you're, it's clear, then I have no problem with people dry firing, I have, I have no problem with people putting objects in the trigger guard, because it's not going to go off. If you think that your gun is going to go off when you personally just checked it, 
then you're probably like that that dumb cop that had his Glock 40. This is a Glock 40. All the rappers be having Glock 40s. All the rappers, 50, too short, they have Glock 40s. And then he shot himself because he's an idiot. Okay? If you check your gun and are sure that it's empty and you shoot yourself, you deserve to shoot yourself. Thinning the herd. Ooh, boy, I said the truth. You were all thinking it. I just said it. Okay? Because, you, again, you have to pull the trigger on some of these guns to take them down. With the P99, you don't because there's a decocker. Obviously not on this BB gun. There's a decocker, so you don't have to pull the trigger. But you can pull the trigger just the same. You need to know when your gun is empty. You need to know when it's empty, all right? So if you're going to put some in the trigger guard or take it down, I don't know. I'm sorry, that's just the way I feel. If you don't know when your gun is empty when you just checked it, sucks to be you. I have no problem whatsoever with people people propping up their guns with the uh, with the pens or any other objects like that. Sorry, I, I don't. I can't say that it's a safety issue at all. That's taking safety too far. Another thing you'll see, point three here, uh, is... Pointing the gun at the camera. Has that ever killed the person on the other side of the camera looking in? No. <laughs> I'm 100% sure that pointing the gun at the camera has never killed the person on the other side of the camera. Ever. <laughs> I'm 100% sure of it. You know, you'll get people bitching in YouTube videos. Uh, the safety Nazis, which, oh, everybody's got to be a big gun expert on YouTube. The safety Nazis, Nazis bitching that you shouldn't point the gun at the camera because that's like pointing it at another person. No, pointing it at another person is like pointing it at another person. Pointing it at the camera is like pointing it at a camera. Okay? Plus, safety Nazis, you have no idea the condition of the weapon. I bet you didn't even know I had this on my lap this whole time. Here's my AR. In fact, I know the condition of this weapon. You don't. I know that the magazine is loaded, but there's nothing in the chamber. Okay? I know about that. You don't know. Everybody's saying you should safety check on camera because, you know, you don't know if it's loaded. You know, when I'm going to do shoot a video here, I've taken the... 30 seconds to check all the weapons beforehand. Sometimes I'll do it, and the only reason I can, uh, the only defense I can come up for um, for this is something that uh, Jeff Cullery Lover said, and I've heard a few other people. If there's kids watching, it's always a good idea to check on camera, you know, in case there's kids watching and they want to, you know, you want to show them good skills, I'm going to safety check the gun. But if I'm just doing some sort of an informative video about, you know, taking down this gun or that, or, you know, showing you something about this, I don't need to do a safety check on camera. I'll, I'll trust that you've done a safety check if I'm watching another video, but, you know, you'll see these people, you didn't safety check that gun, I don't believe you, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, you're not the person. <laughs> you're not the person. You know, I, I don't go into a, I don't watch a video about, you know, dentists pulling teeth and say, I don't think you washed your hands. Mm -hmm. Shaky on that one. You don't do it. There's, there's no reason for it. Let's put this down. <whistles> okay. Now another po point here is what I already mentioned. Uh, treating every gun as, as, as treat every gun as if it is loaded is a stupid safety rule. Oh my God, it's the fundamental rule. It's the number one rule with safety. But I don't think it's a very good one. I say it should be treat every gun as it is loaded as if it is loaded, unless there is one exception. That is, if you just personally checked it. Okay, I checked it. It's empty. Now, in case you need to, uh, sometimes, sometimes it's unavoidable where you need to wave something in front of the barrel, whether it be you're cleaning it in a special position or something like that, or you're cleaning it and there's other people around. Um, if you just checked it, I don't have a problem with it. Don't, don't hand anybody, don't ever hand somebody a gun and say it's empty and just believe them. I always want to check it myself. That I will give you. But if you just check it yourself, no problem with that. No problem with, uh, you know... Especially if you have, if you need to look down the barrel of the, uh, like, say, an AR or something like that, you should always try to do it from the board, but it's not always possible. But if you have an AR, and let's take a look here, let's disassemble this real quick. Okay, the AR is split into two pieces, and then you have the upper here, okay? When I've just checked that this gun is empty, as a matter of fact, I've been talking for a few seconds, I will check it again, because if there's any distractions, you didn't just check it. But let's check it here. Okay, it is in fact still empty. If you need to look down the barrel for any reason like that, like to see if it's clean and you can't really get a good view here, 
I have no problem whatsoever looking down that barrel right there. No problem. That might freak people out. You're never supposed to look down the barrel of a gun. That's not always the case. Sometimes you do, in fact, need to look down the barrel of the gun. Say you're checking, uh, like a Mosin, you need to check the crowning on the end of the barrel. I have no problem with that. Again, the, uh, the upper isn't attached to the lower, and I just personally checked it. No problem with that. Might freak some people out. So would pointing the gun at the camera. I think that's just taking safety too far. Okay? Uh, again, that, that also goes with uh, dry firing. A lot of people freak out about dry firing, and there's a lot of false information going around about dry firing. Um, people say, oh, you're never supposed to dry fire your guns, and that's just a flat-out lie. Um, I believe in the Army regiment, when they're training them, they teach the, uh, the soldiers to dry fire their ARs, whether that be uh, M16 or M4, I don't know what the standard issue is for any branch, but I believe they teach them, because how are you going to know the gun's going to go off if you don't push or if you don't pull the trigger and hear the click. Okay, and it, it doesn't hurt anything. It's just the firing pin coming out and hitting air, nothing than that. Now, you should not do that with 22 rim fires because the uh, firing pin will, or the firing pin will come out and it will hit the uh, inside of the chamber. That's not good. You don't want to do it with rim fires. And some companies avoid it. Uh, uh, tell you not to do it in their manuals and things like that. I don't know if that's a cover your ass thing or there's a legitimate reason for it. But if your company tells you not to dry fire your gun, maybe you might not want to. And here, I'm trying to do this off camera and it's hard to talk. I'm trying to put the AR back together off camera. So let me take one second, pop it back together. Okay. Now, that was hard to do. I was fiddling around there trying to talk and assemble it at the same time. Okay. Put this off to the side for a second. So yeah, dry firing, not as bad as a lot of people think. Um, I know, like, if you watch people like Hickok45, whenever they shoot, I don't know, even six rounds or something, and then he wants to talk on camera for a bit, he'll drop the mag and dry fire it to lower the hammer. Not a bad thing at all. You know, there's way too much FUD going around about dry firing, and again, if you just check the gun and you know it's it's empty, doesn't matter. You're not going to kill anybody. Okay, uh, now six. Oh, this one drives me insane. I can't fucking stand this one. This is another one that comes up in... Uh, the forums recently, but it, it's been around for a while. I thought it was a joke the first time I heard it. Uh, silhouette targets, okay? Like, I, I believe it was California that started this this shit, and knowing California, big surprise there. But, like, they couldn't use black silhouette targets for their police training because it teaches cops to shoot black people. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes, yes, the color of the piece of paper uh, teaches teaches uh, cops to shoot black people. I, I go around and I shoot people with big rings on their head because I was taught to shoot bullseyes. Are you serious? And then some people won't even shoot silhouette targets if it's got the head shape because that means that you're going to be a murderer or anything like that. Um, in my view, a target is a fucking target. I don't care if it's the, a uh, fuck, I don't care if it's a person, a dog, a cow, a cat, an alien, a zombie, it doesn't matter. A target is a target, okay? I support the fucking right to shoot whatever the hell kind of target you want. And some people, uh, you know, because you don't agree with the views of it, they think that they need to impose their feelings on it. Now, I wouldn't do this because, you know, it's just not something that I would do, but I support your right to do it, whatever you want. The, the topic that came up was, uh, would you shoot a, a silhouette of the president, or would you shoot a silhouette of the American flag, or anything like that? Would I personally know? Because I just don't have any reason to. But the thing is, if I saw somebody at the range shooting the president or shooting the American flag, I would support their right to, no matter what. Because while I may not agree with what you have to say, I would defend to the death your right to say it, Okay. I have no problem with that. Oh, but people fought for our American flag, and, you know, they gave their lives for our American flag, and if you were in the armed forces, you would understand that. I believe, um, personally, if you were in the armed forces, you would believe the, uh, you would believe in people's liberty to shoot whatever the hell they want, and it's not really your business to tell them what to shoot or not. Would I shoot the American flag? No, because I don't want to shoot the American flag. I like the American flag. But, uh, if I saw somebody doing it for whatever reason... No, I would have no problem with that whatsoever. Just like the president. People are saying, oh, if you shoot the president, then you're, then you're going to be a big whack job and you're going to have the Secret Service going after you and all this and that. Uh, that's that's New York indoctrination right there. Again, this was a New York site that i seen. It. Uh, do you think that people out there in the, the swamps in the middle of Alabama or Missouri or anything like that? Yes, it's a southern... Um, 
stereotype. Ooh, sue me. Now, uh, do you think that they care if they're shooting a picture of Obama? No, and neither do I. I don't care. I don't care what you shoot. I don't care if you shoot the president. I don't care if you take a picture of me and shoot it. I don't care. It's a piece of paper. It's not like a fucking voodoo doll. It's not going to, you know, kill me if you shoot it. As a matter of fact, if one target is enough, I'll give you two. Shoot them both. I don't care. It's a piece of paper. Yet people flip out. Oh, you're shooting a pig. You're shooting a humanoid target. Therefore, you got to be crazy. And then another thing they always pull out is, but you might need to defend yourself in court. And if the prosecutors find out that you were shooting human targets, then that means you're crazy. Now, that's a lot of FUD. Okay? Okay, okay? FUD. Bunch of FUD. I want to see an actual case where somebody was sent to jail because they were shooting human targets, or because another one that comes up is with the uh, the zombie max ammunition. Oh, I wouldn't want to have to go to court and defend myself if I had ammunition my gun to design for uh, hunting fictional uh, creatures. Then then I'm obviously a crazy person. It's live ammunition. I don't care if it says zombie max or turd swirler on the box. It doesn't matter. It's live ammunition. Why should one be okay but the other one isn't? You know. I'm not worried about it. If you, unless you have a documented case where somebody's ammo choice or their target choice has led to them being prosecuted, I don't want to hear the FUD because the FUD is exactly what the antis want to spread around. And that's crap. Okay, next, moving on, what do we have here? Oh, rapid fire. Another thing that's completely uh, not dangerous if done correctly. Some ranges are like, no rapid fire, or, you know, three seconds between each shot or some other nonsense like that. That's a crock as well. Now, if you have a gun and you do a mag dump or something like that, yes, you can, you can perhaps lose control of it. Or if you have full auto, you can perhaps lose control of it. But shooting two, three, five shot bursts, not going to happen. I really don't think you're going to happen unless you have like a shotgun or something like that. Most, I would say with most guns, not going to be a problem with rapid fire. If you have a semi-auto shotgun with three inch magnum slugs and you try to pull them off as fast as you can, yeah, you probably probably shouldn't do that. But again, that's that leads responsibility. I don't think it should just be a flat out no rapid fire at the range thing. My range says try to limit your rapid fire because we have neighbors. I think that's again, goes back to the don't live next to the fucking fire range if gunshots bother you thing. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't ever do mag dumps because it's a waste of money. I mean, this ammo doesn't grow on trees, but I'll sometimes, I'll do, uh, like, say I'll have three different targets up. I'll do bam, 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 uh, three double taps. I don't have any problem with that. I think that there's a big scary mantra around rapid fire. Then, then the people will say, yeah, well, rapid fire is going to make the antis come after us. It's going to make the antis think we're all crazy. Antis have one job, and that's to be pissed off all the time. So me doing something like that is not really going to fuel their fire. The fact that I even own a gun is pissing them off anyway. So why does my life have to be controlled by what some antis might think? It's not a safety issue. I don't give a fuck what the antis think. No, thank you. Okay, and then uh, another one is the kids and the guns. This will be the last point, kids and guns. Uh, if you teach kids to stay away from guns all the time, like they're the bad things, and if you want a gun, you would you know, lock it up and keep the kids away from it forever. Uh, that's a horrible thing to do because it's analogous to uh, not having your kids touch a vehicle until they're going to take the road test. They've never even been inside of a vehicle before until they take the road test. How do you think that's going to go? No. If you get them going at a young age, whatever age you think they're responsible, I'm not going to give you a number because kids are mature at different times. Slapping an age on something like 18 or 21 or 16 or any other bullshit uh, age or something like that, uh, slapping a number on there is just pure nonsense. Uh, but when you know your kid's responsible, you're the parent. You should know when your own kid's responsible. Uh... You should, you know, get them interested in these things. Get them out there. Get them shooting. Teaching the fun. Teaching them the fundamentals of the safety and stuff like that. You know, teaching them that guns are bad and you stay away from them and stuff like that is only going to lead to problems. Okay. Like I said, you're not going to take your kid out and give them the keys on the road test day. That's not going to happen. Okay. You know, so why should you be doing it with guns or anything like that? I just, I don't understand it. But yes. So to wrap up the video that's been going on for nearly 20 minutes. You can take safety too far. I bet that's what you weren't expecting from the title because everybody else in the whole community needs to say, oh, you can't ever take a safety too far. I don't buy that. I think you can. I definitely think you can, in fact, take safety too far. Not to say that you should take it lightly, but you can definitely take it too far. Putting a, a pen inside of a trigger guard has never killed anybody unless you're an idiot and you don't know how to properly clear your gun anyway. 
Uh, pointing a gun at a camera has never killed anybody. Period. That's it. Uh, pointing a BB gun probably definitely hasn't. <laughs> if that's 100%, that's probably 110%. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I think that's about it. So yeah, you can take safety too far. Post in the comments. I want to hear what you have to say. I want to hear, oh, I don't agree with that. You know, you can't never take safety too far. I'd love to hear it, you know. Uh, like I said, I don't I don't block people for opposing viewpoints. I block people for being dumb. Uh, well, not being dumb. People for posting troll comments. Uh, you know, I mean, when you're... When you're as dumb as, as, like, I don't know, Chuck Schumer or something like that, maybe maybe you'll get blocked. But other than that, okay, go ahead. Uh, post comments and uh, take it easy.